2019 was our first year, full year as Pinos. We have started delivering uh, uh, usable standards like FDC3, uh, code-like perspective, uh, and, and really seeing banks uh, stepping up and contributing code. You know, the, the Alloy announcement, the pure Alloy contribution from Goldman made uh, massive news last year. And again, it's not about the news. We ha now have an ongoing uh, uh, pilot with several banks. And so again, if I look back three or four years ago, our community was really vendor centric in terms of the active contributors. And, and our chief goal was to have banks ready from a policy and a sort of business understanding of open source to actively contribute and, and being able to yield the benefits of open source contribution. Uh, I think by and large, we are there. There's so much more to do. But uh, again, 2019 was, was an amazing year for us. And 2020 has started, again, a couple of, couple of uh, 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 screenshots here around both the press coverage that we had on, on Alloy, as well as, as I was saying, this is real uh, as we're not, you know, we're still working on the final contribution of the code, but we do have an environment that is hosted in Finos. Several banks are collaborating already and other members are collaborating already on you know, really building common models on this platform, which is exactly the goal that we want to achieve. So very excited. Again, this is not just marketing. I just wanted to show that this is, again, tangible progress that we're making. And 2020 has started on the same note. As much as you'll see, of course, we've been a little busy uh, uh, working on this, this uh, important opportunity with the Linux Foundation. We still have signed new banks, new uh, 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 silver members like Adaptive and Genesis. So I want to send a shout out to our new members. Uh, but again, as far as project goes, we have an ongoing pilot on Alloy. Deutsche Bank has just contributed a really interesting project called Waltz. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's a very mature uh, open source project that is used already in multiple financial institutions. And we have Citi uh, uh, almost completing their first uh, major contribution to the foundation. So again, uh, as a testament of we are getting the industry, we, we have made massive inroads over the last two years in getting the industry ready to contribute. Uh, uh, and collaborate in the open. Now, as we started the year, uh, we, you know, we are a relatively small team uh, as the fin. Managing, you know, more than hundred projects in in a team of less than ten, with certainly a community that is still, uh, uh, I wouldn't say high maintenance, but certainly requires. You know, in the curve of open source maturity in terms of self sufficiency, there's certainly a lot that the Finas team still does and helps in uh, um, sort of gaining momentum and velocity in our project. And so, with the board, we face the question of how do we, you know, uh, of course, harvest this growth that we've seeded in 2019, but how do we make this sustainable long term? And bear in mind that this question came up much earlier than the, the obviously very particular situation, the worldwide situation that we're living right now, which I think it makes even more important to have, you know, a uh, uh, really deep consideration as to how we make this sustainable long term. <clears throat> uh, and so as we explored several options uh, late last year and the beginning of this year, uh, uh, it's become clear that the, the most you know, appealing and honestly exciting option for us moving forward will be to join the Linux Foundation and become part of a, 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 you know, what I call an open source powerhouse. The Linux Foundation really hosts the biggest shared technology investment that is out there and has proven over and over again that uh, um, you know, has played really unique role in bringing the sort of corporate open source, if you want, uh, to the mainstream. I mean, um, many projects and, and really markets that we know nowadays wouldn't exist without some of the ecosystem that were built over the last 10 to 20 years by the Linux Foundation. You know, the Linux kernel itself, of course, Kubernetes, 
many of you are, should be familiar with Hyperledger. So it, it became more and more clear uh, in the conversation with our board and with Jim and the team at the Linux Foundation that there was a lot of synergy and one that would help, you know, both sides to, to uh, grow uh, even faster in the financial services, grow the notion of open source collaboration in the financial services industry. So I'm really excited and I think the whole team is uh, as well, I, I hope, uh, uh, um, that we, we now are part of a, you know, bigger organization, uh, mature, from a infrastructure standpoint and so many other uh, aspects that we'll talk through uh, during this presentation. Um, down there, you see the link to the press release. Uh, you're gonna hear me asking you make it, to make noise uh, uh, about this today. Uh, of course, this has been a fully digital announcement uh, given the uh, uh, COVID-19 crisis. And so it's even the more important that each one of you chimes in and helps us really celebrate this accomplishment. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of what that means for Finos, and then we're going to go into a bit more detail of what the opportunity is for you as a community. Um, you know, on high level, I want to say, as far as the overall direction of the foundation and your sort of day by day community facing operations, uh, those will largely remain the same. So uh, uh, I think that's important to, again, stress the fact that we will continue focusing on financial services, we will continue focusing on financial service contributors and consumers, as well as solving this sort of industry wide business challenges, as well as, you know, the team, the Finos team on the day by day. Uh, will still remain the same. Um, so uh, uh, I wanted to sort of lead with that because I think it's important to uh, provide continuity. We obviously went through a, a pretty large expansion and rebranding two years ago. And so I wanted to make sure that everyone understands that our day by day operations will largely remain the same. Um, What's practically going to happen in the back end is really that Finos will be set up as a director fund under the Linux Foundation, uh, very much governed again with a uh, with with basically mapped our current governance into uh, uh, you know the governing documents that manage directed funds under the Linux Foundation. Again, I have a slide in the next slide that Jim uh, you know would provide as an introduction to the Linux Foundation. But if you guys are not familiar uh, with the LF. An umbrella of several other foundations and several other open source collaborative efforts. Again, Hyperledger, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, uh, OpenJS, uh, you know, you name it. I, 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 would, I, I would not make justice to the Linux Foundation uh, as much as Jim could, so I will, I will let him comment uh, uh, on that in the next slide. But basically, Finos will become the financial services Focus Foundation uh, under the umbrella, uh, under the broader umbrella of the Linux Foundation. Um, as far as the governance, I have a slide later on, but generally we are keeping the governance very much similar to uh, what we have been operating under over the last four years. Um, we, as those of you who are more engaged in the community, know that we've been looking anyway at changing some. Uh, of the program governance, and so there might be improvements that come there. We'll talk about it, have a slide on that. Uh, but largely, you can expect the governance, the current license, and the current, you know, CLA process to, to largely remain the same. What we will be able to benefit from uh, as we move forward with the transition, and this is going to take, of course, a few months, but the LF comes with a really strong sort of back office support infrastructure, as well as sort of front office project support services. Of course, I think many of you would agree that uh, a big value that Finos has provided to its community is really the open developer platform and the compliant uh, tooling infrastructure that we make available for our projects. We now have the opportunity to enhance that even more, leveraging, again, a battle-tested uh, uh, infrastructure that the LF has been using across so many industries and so many projects uh, over the last 10 years. Um, as far as members go, 
um, famous member must become LF members. Uh, you'll see in a couple of slides that there's already a lot of overlap. Again, this might not be as important for community leaders, but it certainly uh, was a factor for us to make sure that we would retain and even increase uh, uh, the funding to be able to accelerate all of our operations. Uh, and finally, the FINOS board uh, is, is not going to be a board of directors and be called a governing board, but largely will retain autonomy on the direction and the funding of, of the FINOS directed fund. So, uh, again, overall, uh, we will make sure the transition is as smooth as possible for uh, um, our community, and we expect really to be able to uh, uh, um, use the support of the Linux Foundation in the back end to be able to focus even more on strategic uh, business challenges that we want to solve through open source in this industry. Um, and with that, I would like to ask Jim to give us uh, uh, an introduction on DLF and uh, some of the support services that, that they provide. Absolutely. Thanks, Gavin. And we're, we want to welcome everybody uh, from the Finos community to the Linux Foundation community, although I suspect that many of you are already participating <laughs> in a lot of the different projects that we host. Um, you know, we, we think that uh, if anything, Gab and uh, your whole team's market timing here is impeccable. Um, we, we certainly are in a, a, a period where working together uh, in the face of a, a large global challenge is something that we're all going to have to do. And, you know, before I jump into the things that we're going to be able to uh, provide the Phoenix community, I want to be clear on our priorities in, in this crisis. Um, you know, the Linux Foundation and all of our uh, sub uh, organizations want to preserve the safety and health of our uh, staff and community. Um, our number one goal after that is to uh, maintain employment for uh, our entire teams, uh, despite the fact that uh, we've definitely taken a, a hit uh, with the crisis. We're retraining our event staff to work things that will actually uh, benefit a lot of the Finos projects, um, and uh, we're very committed to that. Uh, we'll also be rolling out some uh, additional uh, training and uh, mentoring opportunities uh, in order to assist folks who have been impacted uh, from a job perspective um, during this crisis, so uh, stay tuned for more of that. I think one of the things that makes this partnership so good is the fact that our organization is going to be able to extend a lot of the, the things that we do for our projects to, you know, do what we like to describe as being the best upstream for a vibrant commercial downstream. And to be a great upstream uh, and to facilitate these amazing projects, whether it's Linux, Kubernetes, uh, on the front end, things like Electron and Node.js, um, we want to make sure that those projects have uh, good places to convene. Uh, last year, we convened over 50,000 developers across all of our events. We want to make sure that the intellectual property provenance is clear and reliable. Uh, we have a variety of tools from uh, tools like SPDX, which tracks software bill of materials across the supply chain, to our easy CLA tools, which automate the ability to sign licensing agreements and commit that you've uh, uh, been uh, adhering to all of the IP rights for the, the code that you're uh, submitting uh, and so forth. Uh, we have an um, amazing training platform that uh, teaches folks from the basics of open source all the way down into deep kernel internals or to become a, a Kubernetes certified administrator. Our training platforms register over 500 people every single day who are learning about open source, learning about uh, our different projects, and the Finos community will be able to take advantage of that large platform to uh, teach your community and train folks uh, to take advantage of the projects uh, in this ecosystem. Uh, we have a variety of certification and testing programs for interoperability, for skills certification, uh, we have an entire entity that promotes our projects. You know, one of the things that uh, is counterintuitive open source is that, you know, uh, marketing actually turns out to be important. 
bring more uh, developers and interest into these communities so we can get more code downstream implementation to produce better outcomes. Uh, Gab already mentioned we have a solid infrastructure here to uh, help improve uh, the development and release process for all of our projects. We've been uh, working uh, over the all of our projects to modern CICD pipelines and uh, modern tooling, uh, modern testing uh, in order to improve the outcomes of those projects. And I think finally, and I think this is important uh, for everyone, is we want to make sure that the projects that we host at the foundation, which are the ones that are the most important to society that run most of the systems that we all use every day, that those uh, projects are secure, that they have really good application security practices, that there's a responsible disclosure process, that uh, those projects are regularly uh, audited and reviewed for security vulnerabilities. We're uh, rolling out new tools that provide uh, deep uh, analysis and uh, continuous code scanning so that we can make sure that our projects uh, are uh, reliable and secure. So all of those things will be uh, extended over the coming months to this community and we look forward to uh, working with Gab, uh, his entire team and all of you in the Finos community. Well, thank you so much, Jim. That's that's really exciting, and I think I, I fully agree with you. Especially, you know, the IP compliance and application security have been, you know, paramount, you know, for any open source community, but I think particularly for you know regulated industries. So, really looking forward. I'm I'm already, you know, eyeing a couple of of components there that I think have been uh, missing. And of course, folks, uh, please feel free. You know especially in the open developer platform working group, but in general, feel free to reach out. I know, uh, you know, we, we've always continued to improve our infrastructure, but I know that there is much more to do, especially to make it fully accessible for banks. And so uh, definitely very much keen to hear your thoughts on uh, uh, how we move forward with it. So thank you, Jim. Um, and going to the next slide, uh, it's a bit of an eye chart, but I, I'm not going to uh, uh, sort of read through, uh, but I just wanted to break down sort of mapping what, what Jim mentioned into, you know, what is the value for Finos and the opportunity for the community in joining forces. Um, you know, I'll start really from the middle, from projects here. Uh, ultimately, this is what we do. Uh, our value is primarily producing uh, you know, vibrant projects that deliver releases that solve problems in the industry. And I think we have a massive opportunity, both in terms of new projects, um, again, becoming the financial services umbrella of a much broader foundation uh, will generate, and I've already been exposed to several really interesting opportunities, uh, you know, that we wouldn't have uncovered uh, or that, you know, where under the sphere of the Linux Foundation uh, that we could actually become the steward for. And so um, you'll see later in the timeline, our hope is to be able to announce some very exciting new projects over the next couple of months. Uh, we have so much opportunity across the whole financial services industry, uh, even as we look beyond uh, capital markets. So uh, a lot, uh, more to come there uh, and I think that's that's going to be a huge opportunity for us but even for existing projects um, I want to call out a couple of things here one of course existing projects will you know garner broader visibility DLF has a pretty impressive reach as as we discussed above but to the point of upstream <laughs> that Jim uh, so uh, properly made um, you know Several of our projects depend on components like Electron or Node.js, for example. So I see that a really major opportunity for our community to more closely collaborate with upstream and being able to, again, under a harmonized governance at this point across Finos and the Linux Foundation, be really able to, uh, uh, you know, make sure that what needs to be upstream should be upstream. 
and what is specific to financial services stays in FINA. So it creates a really nice, uh, I think, prospect for uh, everyone working on, you know, components that are downstream to Electron, downstream to Node, you know, our cloud service certification, uh, uh, you know, how it relates to Kubernetes and, and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and, you know, even Hyperledger uh, and uh, uh, our blockchain uh, efforts, of course, will be will be uh, able to work much closer with each other. Um, as far as member goes, um, DLF has, and Jim, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong here, but has uh, hundreds of members that will be looking to engage. Uh, um, 1,600. 1,600, okay. So I, I kept it conservative there, over 1,500, uh, at least correct. But uh, there's, there's an opportunity to really engage um, beyond the current community. Uh, other financial service institutions, uh, big vendors that are already part of the Linux Foundation, our cloud service providers have been a big uh, goal for us to engage further. Um, and so that's, that's really a, a potential opportunity for growth of our funding. And, you know, that turns into more, uh, uh, you know, in a steam and more activities that we can do to mentor the projects, to coach the project, to even fund our projects. On the flip side, as I said, many of our members, as you actually see in sorry, two slides ahead, I'll jump quickly, most of our members are already members of the Linux Foundation. That only that doesn't only mean that we would, you know, very candidly have less competition on potential, you know, uh, budget uh, uh, um, uh, that is dedicated to open source foundations. But also, as you know, this is a very time intensive. Uh, industry. And so even being able to, uh, uh, you know, focus the uh, uh, attention of, you know, especially our institutional members, uh, it is going to be very important as we, you know, live in a very, uh, uh, um, you know, attention hungry uh, uh, world. I think this is going to be really important to be able to find synergies within the banks uh, of projects around across the Linux Foundation. Um, finally, as far as, as community goes, um, you know, we, this way we reduce fragmentation, we allow the community to become really part of a much broader community. And so I see a lot of potential for cross pollination there. Um, again, if we plot this community sort of in the curve of maturity, I think there's still a lot that we can learn as a community on how we collaborate and build a successful open source project in a self-sustained way. And again, DLF has a, a track record and certainly a, a very large, uh, 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 you know, base of contributors that can bring uh, uh, additional support to our project. Um, and then Jim touched on the supporting services. Just to put it in context, we now have several projects that could use certification, uh, could use training, and it probably would have taken us you know, months, if not years, to set up a program like that. And so right now we'll have the chance to spin up, you know, quickly training and certification, uh, um, you know, programs. So please feel free to reach out on that. It's something that actually Rob Underwood will be leading from, from our side. So if you have any interest there, this is, this is a really good time to get those conversations started. Uh, DLF hosts the Open Source Summit, Cubicon, like tens and thousands of people of it, yeah, per, per event. Um, the LF will be, you know, once we go back to uh, uh, the new normal after this crisis, the LF will be uh, uh, helping us organize the Open Source Strategy Forum. We'll be consolidating uh, uh, our respective events into one. Again, big potential for uh, bigger, better events. Um, and then finally, I want to touch on open source readiness. Um, you know, we know that this industry requires uh, special attention when it comes uh, to become sort of open source ready from a policy technology and sort of business standpoint. But the LF has several uh, initiatives like the To Do Group, Open Chain, ACT, uh, that really work for the same goal. And so I can see that a lot of potential consolidation, not in terms of just in terms of material, but thought leadership and really how effective we can be in quickly moving the needle in, in banks being able to contribute. 
Um, I'm gonna quickly touch on projects. Um, we created a new slide here uh, that, that plots our key projects. Again, this is just a sample list, but we're starting again in the spirit of more and more focusing on solving business challenges. We now have a map of uh, how our projects fit into uh, uh, you know, a potential uh, uh, financial service institution uh, uh, business organization or, or set of use cases and workflow. Um, and I just wanted to call out explicitly that, of course, you know, uh, uh, these projects that the Linux Foundation is hosting, and again, I picked only four here, they are already open source and, you know, you could have used it and probably you're using it already, uh, using those already. But as we come together, I see that a major opportunity for, again, a better upstream collaboration. Um, again, we have several implementations based on Electron, on Node. I really do hope that we can, uh, uh, again, make sure that what, what needs to flow upstream can go upstream, and I will be happy to entertain, again, these conversations about synergy across projects under the Linux Foundation. So really, really exciting opportunities, I think, and I would love uh, for you folks to, you know, take time to go and browse the projects of the Linux Foundation, you know, feedback to us which areas of, of potential you see there for collaboration. Um, we talked about the members, I'm not going to go through that list on the right, but as you can see, there's a, there's a really good potential for us to, to grow the support for this community. The monetary support for this community, which in turn turns into uh, more investment. Um, quick timeline here, because I want to make sure we open up for questions as well. Um, of course, we will share this slide and publish this slide, so uh, no need no need to take screenshots here. Um, but we are now at the point of announcement. Um, over the next few months, what's going to happen is really uh, on the back end. Uh, we are working with our members to uh, execute a new participation agreement under the sort of Thinos directed fund under the Linux Foundation. And to be clear, something that I didn't mention, we are not going to change brand. The Thinos brand will remain the same. You know, we went through pivot two years ago, far from me to wanting to rebrand again. Uh, but yes, there are some procedural steps for our members to become members of the new directed fund. And then the main goal would be uh, in a month or two, as now we are public, to announce new members and new projects that we're bringing into Finos. Um, lots more uh, uh, to come there in the next month or two. And then finally, again, this is very approximated, but we are going to more and more migrate our infrastructure, our backend system to the Linux Foundation Fund. As we do that, we'll end up winding down the existing Delaware Corporation that uh, Thinos is currently operating under. Um, again, I'm going to share this slide, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but we, as I said, we've had basically no substantial governance changes uh, as we mapped our governance into uh, 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 the Finos uh, charter, uh, uh, Finos Directed Fund charter. Um, you can see here some minor changes in terms of representation. Um, we removed some procedural provisions that you know, were required uh, by us being a corporation under Delaware law. Um, so again, nothing substantial there. I really wanted to show this just to say that, again, the governance that uh, we put together will continue, uh, uh, you know, largely as is and under the uh, oversight of the governing board. Uh, there is one addition that we're looking to bring. We have a board meeting in about two weeks. Um, as you know, we've been looking at removing programs to really simplify and streamline uh, the way our community uh, uh, sort of is governed, moving back to a centralized uh, versus federated uh, governance approach. So we are putting forward a, the idea of a technical advisory committee, uh, more of, uh, as, as uh, uh, we put forward the proposal next week to the membership and governance committee and the week after to the board. 
uh, but I think it's going to be really important as a body to really map between the business challenges that the board identifies and the uh, uh, open source projects that we do have in our portfolio. But again, all in all, very small changes in our governance. I wanted to make sure that that was uh, clear to everyone. And with that, uh, uh, we have put together an FAQ page. I hope there's the right link up there. Let me just make sure. That is correct. Uh, we have an FAQ which has been circulated, uh, answers what we think are the most common question about this transaction, but I wanted to also open up right now to the, this group to see if there are any specific questions. So feel free to unmute or post your question in the chat. Questions will assume silent consent. <laughs> Everyone is muted, so make sure that you unmute yourself. When I... Okay, With five minutes left. I, I wanted to just say, um. This is a really big deal for us. Uh, I think for us, of course, as a team, we're very excited, but also for us as a community. Um, you know, four years ago, we started building a community on a single platform, Symfony. Two years ago, we expanded to, uh, uh, you know, a much more ambitious charter and mission to bring open source in financial services as a first class citizen. I think today marks another fundamental milestone for us to continue growing and accelerating what we're doing. And I'm, you know, absolutely excited. I can't wait. Uh, you know, we've been sitting on this announcement for a month now as the crisis unfolded, but, you know, it was, it was due and we're really excited to get started. I hope you folks are proud because I mean, without you, we wouldn't have been here. So I, I want to send a shout out to you and hopefully as much as we can sip champagne, also because it's 9.40 a.m. here in, in the West Coast, but um, uh, you know, I'm Italian. We have a little bit of a loser approach to that, but kidding aside, as much as I cannot uh, share with you uh, uh, in person, uh, my gratitude and, and sort of celebrate this, I hope you'll be able to uh, appreciate that this is a huge deal. And I don't know, Jim, if you want to say a couple of, couple of words on that. No, I, I really look forward to working with uh, all of you. And, you know, quarantine rules are um, airport rules. So, you know, we can drink anytime we want. <laughs> I have my espresso, but it's, <laughs> it's not corrected. Uh, I, I really look forward to working with everyone. And uh, we think that this is a, a great, great uh, partnership. And um, we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you, Jim. Uh, and as we... Before I, I let you all go, and obviously if there is any closing questions, please feel free to chime in. Um, please do celebrate. Uh, help us make some noise. Again, this announcement is unfortunately uh, all digital. Again, this is something that more and more I think we'll see happen in the future. Um, you've noticed we have started having weekly virtual meetups. So this is probably an element of the new normal, but anything that you can do to help us uh uh you know spread the spread the word and and you know amplify the message um you know we'll share this deck right away but if you go to the famous twitter account or our linkedin account or even if you want to post anything you know uh, uh original or, or original content in your feeds or even on our blog Please feel free to reach out. We'd love to, to make the most out of this announcement as we think it's going to drive a lot of interest both in the financial services world as well as uh, uh, in the tech world. Um, there's so many other ways that you can help us promote. Um, so don't, don't be shy. This is a huge accomplishment for you primarily as a community. Uh, I think this is going to be a, a really fun ride moving forward. So um, yeah, that's, that's all from me.
Uh, and if you want to learn more, actually, before I wrap, um, we have a press release. We just published the blog post on our side, uh, on the famous side, giving really our introduction to this exciting news. And there's also a, a blog published on the Linux Foundation side. So you can see their perspective as well on this exciting news. And of course, I mentioned the FAQs and please feel free to always uh, 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 if you have any further questions. With that, is there, and we are two minutes to the end of the call. I am surprisingly on time, I guess to say. Um, is there any final question or point that you guys chat or, or Adam that I should address. Hey, Gad, this is Nick. I want to say this is an amazing accomplishment. And I uh, also want to just say with this announcement too, um, just want to let everybody know that uh, FTC 311 went live today. Oh, great. So the updated Congrats. standards um, on the live site now. Timing, I guess we'll, we'll make a lot of noise on it in the next couple of days. So one more thing to make noise about, folks. Thank you, Nick. You've been an amazing contributor from, from the very beginning. So I look forward uh, to, to bring FDC3 to you know, even uh, even a higher level uh, and more visibility under DLF. Thanks, Guy. We're looking forward to uh, being part of the LF as well. So uh, thank you as well, Jim. and. Uh, you're on time, so it's, I don't want to screw that up. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the first time it happened in 40 years running the foundation. So, yeah, I, I'm sure Tosh and Alexander are like, what's going on here? <laughs> Not saying a word. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, any, any final questions? Or we actually have uh, recorded this session. Got to mention this at the beginning. Good news, me and Jim are the only one who have spoken here. So uh, um, we will probably make this available uh, in some form or fashion over the next couple of weeks and we'll be posting the slides just right after this presentation. But uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Again, this is a really exciting moment. So hopefully, uh, please celebrate and, uh, you know. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.